evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Rachel Lucas. I'm Brittany McGraw. John Carlin has the night off. The safety of children at risk. Social services is supposed to protect them, but a 10 News investigation discovered that's not always the case. Thousands of kids are being diverted from foster care, sent to live with family or friends without proper background checks. And as anchor Jenna Zimpton found out, it's ending in disaster and heartbreak. We all know that the system is flawed. But it may be more flawed than we realize. Right now we've got about 4,900 kids in foster care. And I would say really an out of home care that's facilitated by social services, I would say it's double that. Agencies are trying to avoid putting kids through the system, but they're making the determination that the child is not safe to be at home. You got a lot of problems with that from a legal perspective. Hidden foster care, foster care diversion, kinship diversion, shadow foster care. Those are the many names for what's happening across Virginia, according to Eric Reynolds, the Office of the Children's Ombudsman Director. Are they trying to keep the kids off the books? Are they trying to keep their caseloads down? Are they, are what? It could be all of the above. I, I, okay. I can't, you know, I, I don't know what the reasoning is. I mean, you know, we, we, Virginia is one of the states that has the lowest foster care rate. We have the lowest number of kids in foster care, but I would argue that we're not counting all these kids that are in these alternative caregiving arrangements. When you hear that this is happening, what does that make you think, feel? It's really frustrating. It makes us really frustrated. There really is not much guidance out there about it. And so once the child is safe in the alternative caregiver's home, a lot of agencies just sort of leave it alone and close the case. What could happen if there's no oversight of these diversion? cases. Well, anything could happen. I mean, uh, again, the safety of the child is at risk. We do, we've got varying levels of vetting going on of the relatives. Reynolds told 10 News that in one case, a relative was contacted about some of her family going into foster care. She drove five hours from out of state to pick them up. The agency apps did nothing to vet this. All they did was they called her on the phone and said, hey, do you have any criminal uh, convictions? No. Uh, any CPS findings? No. That's all they did. They just asked the, per the, the relative, and she was like, are you going to do anything more than that? Do you need me to sign any papers? No. He says once she got home, the woman had nothing that said she had legal custody, so she couldn't even enroll them in school. The agency did facilitate getting the mother to sign a handwritten power of attorney, which helped some. The kids had special needs. She had to stop working to get them adjusted. But she wasn't getting any monetary or medical support a foster or kinship family would get. So a few months later, she had to return the kids. That's like one of the worst situations, right? Not every situation is like that. But that, I mean, even worse has happened to children because the process didn't, wasn't there to support the child the children or the relative caregivers or the parents. You'll hear the local departments of social services say, well, it's not our control because this is a voluntary placement. You're taking the control away from the parents and giving it to all these other people. Well, I beg to differ. Again, there's that coercion piece that says, well, parents, if you don't do this, we're going to go this route. And so they have no other choice. What kind of a choice is that? You know, it's it's voluntary, but it's coerced voluntariness, I guess. Since judges aren't involved, kids can be in these arrangements for years and parents can lose custody permanently because there's not a plan for them to get their kids back. Reynolds tells me Virginia has been trying to do something about this for years, but new policies or laws haven't been able to stick. If you have an issue, we have contact info for the Ombudsman's Office on WSLS.com. Jenna Zibton, 10 News, working for you.